Amen, my friends, and amen. A few announcements for you this evening. As of course, you can follow any of the programs if you like, but they're not really there. And so we'll move on. First of all, restrooms are down the hallway here if you need, or downstairs at the bottom of the steps. Now the hallway here is more for kids, if you need to say that. The bottom of the steps are the men's rooms, and a little further down the hallway downstairs is the ladies' room. Secondly, this evening, we will have candles, both, of course, live flame candles, as well as candles for kids. You can find these at the um, door if you like the glow sticks. If you'd rather the kids play with these, they'll be for our service because we want everyone involved here today. So those are in baskets at both doorways. And also, if you need to grab a candle this evening, make sure you grab one during the hand of fellowship because we don't want you to be left out. But when, the, when it's that time in the service, make sure you um, take care because, of course, we will have live flames. So nobody wants to go to the hospital tonight for that. Finally, services welcome for kids. We do have the uh, nursery downstairs and its staff with uh, two great ladies. But we love kids in worship. So if they're a little rambunctious, if they make noises, guess what? We're used to it. We enjoy it here. And you'll see later on the service, we encourage that. So those are three announcements to make this evening. Otherwise, my friends, why don't we greet one another with the love of Christ?
Father, we pray that you hear us this evening as we worship you. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus. We have work in our midst. We thank you so much that Emmanuel, God amongst us, came and was with us and is with us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My friends, our Advent reading this evening will come from the close family. So, gentlemen, if you're ready. Except we probably need the candles lit. <laughs> Is it up here, Dale? I got it. All right, you're here. Israel 
from the house of Judah. In those days, and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called, the Lord is our righteousness. My friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. So let's sing together of Emmanuel. Christmas. 
You guys going to sleep until 8 or 9 o'clock tomorrow? No. I think so. Oh, okay. You're going to get up early, huh? Do you get excited about the presents? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. What do you guys do whenever the presents are open? Do you just sit there serenely, calmly, patient? Really, Lincoln? <laughs> I doubt it. I still remember when I was a kid watching wrapping paper go flying in the air. And one year, my sister actually caught wrapping paper on fire with, on fire with a candle. It was awesome. It was in my house, so it was awesome. We'll move on. She doesn't like the fact that I mentioned that. All right, Lincoln, thank you. Okay. All right, but anyhow, moving on. But there's some, uh, something else for us to celebrate as well. So if you get really excited tomorrow for Christmas, there's also this, because it wouldn't be the first time people got excited, or maybe I should say persons got excited at Christmas. Thank you. Give me a second. Ready? Here we go. From Luke chapter 2. And suddenly there's a great company. Hey, Lincoln. Jump. Give me a second. You guys ready? Here we go. All right, Lincoln. Luke chapter 2. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host, which means a whole bunch of angels, like an army's work. But suddenly appeared with the angel, who was already talking to these shepherds in the field, praising God, and they said, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on whom God's favor rests. What's that mean? All these angels showed up suddenly in the skies whenever Jesus was born, and to these shepherds, they started singing songs. Lincoln, do I have to sit between the two of you? All right, we'll... Thanks, guys. Either way, they suddenly started singing. So guess what I'm asking you to do tonight? Here's what I'm asking you to do tonight. I want you to sing, not just with joy, I want you to sing loud. I want you to make some wild noise tonight when we sing. Are you guys able to do that? Yeah, we can. I bet you can. Here's what you're going to do. Some of you are terrified. Well, I'm going to give you some helps because just in case, the other you can do it on your own. Here's something to help you. Parents, you're going to love this. We have here what we call noisemakers. Have you ever seen these wonders from machines? Just like that. I'm going to give you each one of these. We're going to ask you to wait until we sing the last song we sing, Joy to the World. Okay? You'll be able to tell at the end of the service to use them then. Are you guys willing for, to do that? Are you willing to wait? If you can't wait, don't take one. But when Joy to the World comes on, that's why I need you to make noise with these suckers, okay? You saw, I did it. I won't shoot you. If the adults get cranky, just tell them, Pastor Brian made me do it. It'll work. <laughs> you guys do that? I think some of you don't even need noise makers. They'll be there. But also, before we get those, we want to pray. And I also have here for you, because you don't want to be a sour kid. So we're going to sour patch kid. Or, you know, I want you to make a lot of noise, so don't be a nerd. In other words, I want you to be very jolly. So I've got jolly creatures here, okay? So wherever you like, I've got candy here afterwards. But don't forget your noise maker. Now we're going to pray first, all right? Let's pray. Father, help us to make a joyful noise tonight. Thank you so much that Jesus is song worthy. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's some noise makers. Make sure you grab one, guys. I've got the candy here. So come on up. Grab your noise makers. Grab some candy. <coughs> Because loved ones aren't here anymore. They're gone in the glory. 
So Christmas can also be a very painful time and painful time. And so at this point in the service, hearkening to that idea of a blue Christmas, we do want to take a moment and just make sure we get ourselves organized as well for tonight. To want to honor those who we love and aren't here. And if nothing else, also pray for folks here where it's a difficult time. For some of us, you have family members you won't talk to or can't talk to because they won't return your calls. Or there's something that's happening. For others of us, because we miss a lot more. <coughs> but I'm going to go start with the Christ candle. <coughs> because in the midst of sorrow and hope, where I find meaning and hope, it's only through Jesus Christ. chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was gover governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Thank you. Thank you. Carrie, you ready?
she didn't know she was going to be playing that through a few hours ago when we uh, realized that Patty Fletcher, um, who had special music, wouldn't be able to be here tonight. So, Carrie, thank you. Friends, let's sing together hymn number 219. What shout is this? Just the first two verses, hymn number 219.
this way. Great is the Lord, most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Huh. Psalm 145 puts it that way. It's actually worth seeing, praising God. That Jesus is song worthy. I mean, we can sing hymns in church all the time, but do you ever wonder why? I mean, it sort of seems a little strange, doesn't it? It seems a little goofy. It seems countercultural, if you like. Well, it's because Jesus is song worthy. He's worthy of us to sing to him and sing about him. That we, we see that with the first Christmas with the angels in the field singing with, to the shepherds. And they let their singing rip. It, they didn't hold back. It filled the skies. It flowed. And so we do tonight. Not because of tradition only. Not because of something we're supposed to do only. But also do it because Jesus is song worthy. So we'll sing because Jesus is song worthy. Jesus is song worthy, and, but, but why don't we sing more often, especially with the, the, the benefits there are. Did, a recent survey indicated the, some incredible things that come about when we're willing to sing. The group singing especially is this great thing that happens. It fosters togetherness. Group singing regulates your heart rate. Did you know that? Y'all feel regular now? Seriously, that's what the studies indicate. Regulate your heart rate. It reduces stress and depression when you sing, especially with other folks. It reduces the effects of Parkinson's disease and lung disease. Singing even fosters social well-being and might, oh, 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 pay attention, it might just increase your lifespan. Y'all are going to walk out of here singing for 20 hours straight, I'll bet. But you can actually increase your lifespan by singing. Think about that. Now you have no excuse when you're in the shower, huh? Except when your neighbor or your family, your neighbors, if you sing that loud and depressed, your family gets on you. But why don't we sing so often? Why, why do we push that aside? I don't know if it's because we've been taught not to or what, but, well, anyhow, Max Lucado thinks of that idea as well, but maybe why we don't sing. He tells a story about a woman who had a parakeet named Chippy. She loved Chippy. The woman just loved Chippy for a little parakeet because he sang such sweet songs. Beautiful, fun, loving, you know, as far as parakeets go, sort of bird. But if you walk by, Chippy sang away. It was a joyful noise to hear. She loved Chippy. So much so that she cared for him and was in, kept his cage immaculate. One day she went over, she was vacuuming out the bottom of his cage as he was on top of the, uh, on his little swingy thingy. Swingy thingy, is that the technical term? You know what I'm talking about, the swingy thingy. There he is, the parakeet hanging on his swingy thingy up there. And the phone rang. So she left the vacuum cleaner with the tube running into the, 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 the cage there and went to get the phone. Guess what happened? Guess what happened? Suddenly, Chippy became part of the vacuum cleaner. Whoa! It was about the sound she heard when she realized Chippy was sucked inside the uh, vacuum cleaner and she heard clunking inside the machine. That's not a good sound to hear, especially when it's a loud bird. She hurried up as quickly as she could, but she never hung up the, hung up the phone. She never hung up the phone, ran over, made sure she turned off the vacuum cleaner, threw that sucker open to see what had happened to poor little Chippy. You have an idea what happened to Chippy? I think some of you just did it with the coughing. Exactly. That's what Chippy's got going on as a parakeet. There's no singing at all. This bird is dust covered. He is. He looks as though he tried to get into a fight and lost a fight with a whole bunch of dust bunnies. He is disparagingly bad looking. It's as though he went outside and he's hanging out with Pink Pen, and Pink Pen won the cleanliness contest, if you know what I mean. Chippy is beat up. She runs Chippy over to the sink and starts washing Chippy off. Chippy loving to douse under the sink with all that dusty water go flowing all over the place. And the feathers are ruffling and they're sticking out at edges. Finally, she's able to get Chippy into a place where Chippy is not dust covered and completely dirty. Chippy gave, gave her a look as though she had totally done this on purpose. And she put Chippy back into not a pretty clean cage. Chippy gave her that. I don't know, do parakeets give you the cold shoulder? It sure seemed like the cold shoulder. Jimmy turned his back upon her and strode off as far as she as Jimmy could away from the owner. A few weeks later, her friend who she'd been talking to on the phone called her to see how Chippy was. She heard about how Chippy's narrow escape from that uh, vacuum cleaner. And as, as the woman described it, she said, you know, Chippy just hasn't been the same. I mean, he's alive, but he's just not the same. He just sits in his cage all day and stares out into space. And what's really weird? Chippy doesn't sing anymore. Not what happened, but for many of us, we may not want to sing. We may have had a traumatic experience or, or we feel pain. I don't know, for some folks, 
Singing is a difficult thing because it brings back memories. But why don't we sing? For others of us, it might have just been that we were trained not to. You know, that's a thing for girls. When I was in uh, fifth grade, I didn't join the choir at the school, part because they didn't want my voice. But the other part was because that was for girls at that point. For some of us, we, um, we think that singing is just for kids and it's not for adults. Or, or maybe we just leave that for the shower when we're driving in our car and hope nobody notices us at the red light when we're singing to ourselves. Maybe we get to the, we've gotten to the point where we worry about what people will do if they heard us sing. How bad do I sound? But did you hear that? When the angels sang out about Jesus when he was born, nothing stopped them. We live in a culture where singing this, uh, about someone else seems to be a little strange. And, any, and how often do we really sing someone else's praises? And yet, that first day, that first night when Jesus was born, the angels let it rip. Now, we may have this idea in our heads, like with the angels on the walls here, which are somewhat accurate, but the angels in the Bible weren't the cupid little things that we get images of. They're warriors. They're mighty men, for lack of a better term, who fought spiritual battles. The scriptures describe they're anywhere from six to eight to ten feet tall. Their main jobs were battle and to deliver messages. You've got warriors singing that night when Jesus is born. Something special is going on. Why the shepherds? I don't know. Maybe it's because Jesus is for everybody, not just the spiritual elite. But they sang his praise. Jesus is song worthy. In the Bible, we hear many instances where people sang the praises about Jesus. In Matthew chapter 7, it puts it this way. Jesus went out from there, and two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. And when Jesus had gone indoors, the blind men came to him and asked, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. And then Jesus touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their sight was restored. Jesus warned them sternly, see that no one knows about this. But they went out to spread the news about him all over that region. That night, they sang Jesus' praise. Friends, we have that chance tonight where we get to sing about the one who's actually worthy of our singing about. We've got athletes on TV who constantly fail us. If you've watched the news, you've seen again and again politicians who we may have put up on this platform or, or actresses and actors who we put up on a pedestal and they've fallen down because they've abused their position or whatnot. Are they really worthy of our praise? Only one is. The one who came in such a surprising way, whose whole job was to come here, to live life, and die for us that we might live. <clears throat> Jesus is song worthy. He's worthy of our praise. And that first Christmas, the angels let their singing rip. And tonight, we get to do that. Now, our kids might do it, too, during Joy to the World. I'm just warning you. I heard it in the first service. They sound like we had some sick geese here. I'm just saying. But it may have sounded not so pleasant to our ears. You may find by the fourth verse you're sick and tired of those little cheap little eight for a dollar kazoos that bought the Dollar General. But the scriptures also tell us that we're called to make a joyful noise unto God. So I'm going to ask you to let her rip tonight. Tell God how very God is, as we say. Because there's only one who's song worthy. Most of us have given up on singing, or at least we don't sing about someone else. We may catch ourselves in church once in a while. We may sing in the shower. We may sing whenever we're in the car by ourselves or hope nobody notices. But there's really only one who's song worthy. He's Jesus, who broke into our world in the incredible way he did to show us God's incredible love. Jesus is song worthy. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And so as we sing together silent night, kids, keep your noisemakers to the side for a moment. Because instead, this is one of those serious songs where it talks about this the beautiful way in Jesus, the way Jesus came. Friends, I encourage you one to take care as you light one another's candles. Because guess what? You may have hairspray in, your neighbor may have hairspray in. You don't want to find out what kind of hairspray it is and how flammable it is. Take care. I encourage you to lean your unlit candle towards the lit candle at that time of the service. Also, we ought to stand together and sing together. Sound of Night is printed on the back of your program there. You can find that back page of the bulletin. Let's stand together as we sing together. <laughs>
Friends, as you take care to extinguish the candles, you may have noticed a few things tonight. One, it's very easy for these to go out on their own. It's very easy to let the candles go out when they're by yourself. We do need each other. God created us to be working and living with other Christians. And two, may your light shine as you leave for tonight, as Jesus, the light of the world, enter an hour and mix. This time, I want to make sure that we take care and extinguish our candles. All right, there, youngsters. If you've got your noisemakers, you better pull them out. Adults, if you brought your plugs, you may want to use them. Exactly. Because it's the time to make a joyful noise. Let's sing together. Hymn number 246. Joy to the world. Thank you. 